All right, so I got a question for you. Why is it important to understand your personal standards, to acknowledge them? Let me ask you this. How many people do you think have a realistic understanding of their standards? When I talk to most people about their standards, what they think they are, they tend to hover over here in the ideal. They give me an answer that sounds really good, right? That, that sounds like, it, like they're, they want to perform, like they, they have a high expectation for themselves. So going back to my question, how many people do you think have an actual realistic understanding of, of what their standards are? No. From an outside perspective, what would I know what somebody's standard is in any area of their life? What they repeatedly do. What they repeatedly do. That's their standard. Not what they do once. What they repeatedly do. Now, most people, when they talk about their standards, they're referencing an ideal of the person they wish they could be, they would like to be, on their best day they might be, but it's not an accurate reflection of who they actually are. So going back to this idea of standards, it is important that you understand what your real standard is. You've got to get fucking real with yourself. Otherwise, you're living in delusion. We talked about the identity gap. To the degree in which this gap is large, you have zero power to change your life. Let me illustrate this. If you sincerely believe you have very high standards for yourself, okay, you sincerely believe that this is who you are, and this is how you behave, and this is how you treat people, and this is how you look, and this is how much you earn. When your world doesn't line up with this, what is your only real option? If you're hovering in the ideal world about who you think you are, okay, and I coach a lot of people, especially early in life, that are over here. We all know these people, by the way. Every human being in here has a natural BS detector. Some of you have learned to turn it off, mute it, especially if it's you talking to you. But we all have a natural BS detector. That BS detector is when we're listening to our friend talk about what they're gonna do, or what they're about, or they talk about you know, who they are, and you're like, bro, you're late, like every day to work. I know what you do at night. I go to bed at 10 every night, and you're like, I'm your roommate, bro. I don't remember the last time you read before midnight. You were up playing fucking NBA, COD. Do we say that, though? Very often, we just go, inside, BS which is a whole other discussion and not for today, why we just do that instead of helping our friend out and calling them out on their shit. But when we do that, it reinforces the ideal. So if they genuinely believe, I go to bed at the right time, I have an excellent nighttime routine, I have an excellent morning routine, they genuinely think that's true. I work out, I eat right, I'm the first one into the field, I work hard, I hustle, I talk to a ton of people. And they genuinely think that is all true, and they are not getting the result they want. What is their only real option? Blame others. Blame others. I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything right. Can't be me. There is only one way you could absolutely be certain you're doing everything right. What is it? You're getting the result you want. Okay, if you are not getting the result you want, I would like to suggest to you one of two things are happening. You either don't have the skill required to do it yet, and if you're wondering if that's the case, just ask yourself, have I ever demonstrated the capability to do this? If you are in this room right now, you have demonstrated the capability to hit $1,200 a week, which is the current standard for alpha. So I'll use that as an example. If you have demonstrated the capability to do that, you likely have the skill to do that, because you had to do it two weeks in a row. Okay, so one is you either need skill. On the topic of sales in this room, I would like to suggest to you that isn't your issue. 
The second reason is because your internal standard of what you expect for yourself is much lower than you think. And if you can't acknowledge what your actual standard is for you in any area of your life, it will fuck with you forever because you will be confused why you aren't getting what you want. And because you, you genuinely, in delusion, believe you're doing everything right, it has to be outside of yourself. It's the world's fault. It's my family's fault. It's the economy's fault. Whatever the fuck. Can you see how that keeps you trapped? First thing we need to understand is what is our actual standard? And there's no right or wrong answer to that, but you do need to know what it is. With no judgment, just this is what really I expect for myself in any area of your life. Your bank account is a reflection of your actual standard, not your, ah, oh, what I'd like, oh, this would be lovely. No, what, what your actual standard is. Your friends are a reflection of your standard. Your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, a reflection of your standard. Your body is a reflection of your standard. Not your ideals, not what I would like, what you are okay with, what you are willing to tolerate. Man, if you can get this at this point in your life, it will change everything. It'll change everything. It is easy for me to predict an outcome in somebody's life by just taking an accurate assessment of what they are okay with, what they are willing to tolerate in any area of their life. It is easy for me to predict outcome based on that. What are you okay with? What are you willing to tolerate? So how do we close this gap? If what I think is my standard is not what I consistently do, I may want to go down the journey of understanding where is my floor. I'm looking for Prince Charming. These are what I look for in a partner. Honesty. Integrity. They dote on me. They love me in the language that I receive love in. I am their world. I don't know, fucking make up your story about what your Prince Charming is. Okay? okay? Then go, is that who I date? Oh, better, better yet. Ask your friends to describe your partner. How close does that line up with your story? If it does not, I would like to suggest to you what you described was your ideal, what you're dating is your real. So that would be your floor. Your floor is what you do daily. Your floor is what you repeatedly do. We, that's why I say all the time, I don't really care what your best day looks like. I care how you show up every day. Your best day does not impress me. How you show up daily impresses me. Or not. That's the secret to winning. Success is a fucking grind. It is not sexy, and I promise you it is not the Instagram reel you all keep fucking seeing. Most of them are absolutely full of shit. They rent cars they do not own. They take pictures of houses they do not own. They promote a lifestyle they've never had to get you to buy into something that there is an easy, quick way to become a success. There is no fucking easy, quick way to become a success because success isn't a destination. It is a journey of becoming. It is the development of the person that can sustain it. If you do not develop you, you will not sustain success. And the very thing you seek may end up destroying you. Ideally, I'm a great money manager. I'm very disciplined with my money. I don't make bad decisions. God in her infinite wisdom blesses you with a million dollars and you're bankrupt a year later. What the fuck just happened? Because that isn't who you are. Real you, fuck, I've never had more than $50,000 in my entire life. I'm going to do all the things I wish I could have. If you think I'm full of shit, think about how many actors, how many musicians, how many athletes come into a fuck ton of money and destroy their lives? Why? Because they never understood how to manage it. They never understood what success really is. All right? Success is a mentality. It isn't a moment in time. It is the way you see your world. When you get this right, 
Success is the natural fruit of who you are. At this point in your life, you probably all have that friend that just looks like they have the golden touch. Everything they get involved with seems to work out. Or they just always seem to win. The reason is because they are programmed. They have a level of standard for themselves and an expectation for themselves that keeps them in that spot. It is a natural fruit of who they are. The good news for everyone, it is something that can be learned. It is software, not hardware. You can update your software. But success is a mentality. It first happens here. How you show up every day is a reflection of your actual standard and who you really are. Not what you say, but what you do repeatedly. It's your name on the back of your jersey. Do you care what that says about you? How you show up shows that. Thoughts, questions? So, that's great, right? So, the fact the mentality. But what is the application of, so you said, you know, going here for what's the application of what is the What is the application? What is the application of acknowledging what your real standards are? What would be the application of acknowledging what your real standards are? Why would that be important? You have to know where you're starting. Until you get real about who you are, you have no shot. Because you're starting at the wrong navigational point. Let me give you a real world example. Who's made the trip to, to Vegas from LA? Okay, most of us. What if I ideally believed we were in Barstow right now? When, in fact, we're still in Orange County. Would my navigation be accurate? Would we get to Vegas in the time that I thought we would? Everything would be fucked up and confused. This is what happens when you are not real about where you're at. You think you're in Barstow and really you're in LA. So then when nothing else adds up and you're totally delusional in your ideal world, And I literally hear people say things like this. Wow, did, did, did we move Vegas two hours away? We should have already been there by now. Well, maybe there's a better explanation. Maybe you were two hours farther away than you thought. We have to get real about where we're at if we have any shot at changing anything. We have to take a, a natural assessment of who we are and where we're at. Now, most people struggle with this because they're afraid to look themselves in the mirror. Let me save you something. You are worthy. You deserve love. You are just who you are and you're okay. But until you fucking look in the mirror and start to acknowledge if I want some things to change, it starts with me, nothing is gonna change. Michael Jackson sends the word. Man in the mirror. <laughs> You've gotta take an assessment of where you really are. What am I okay with? That's how you learn to navigate. Otherwise, your numbers won't make sense. So that's why the practical application of this is once we get this down, we can start making decisions to get us to where we want to go. And where I see people get trapped is they're over here for long periods of time and they're confused why it's not working out. The group that struggles with this, by the way, by, if you're looking at it from a profile standpoint, is eyes. No surprise, if you're in business or in sales, there's a lot of eyes in business and sales. They like working with people. They like engaging with people versus a computer screen. They're more energy motivated. They're more personality motivated. They like recognition and reward. They also tend to be the most confused about where they really are. Why is that? Which isn't a bad thing. Everything first starts in the unmanifest, but there's a deeper reason for this. What is a high eyes general first desire to be liked to be liked to be accepted to have people praise them recognize them if that is your first priority I would like to suggest to you that would make you more susceptible to saying things and prognosticating a truth that is not viable yet you were you are postulating a future you in such a way. Now here's the real rub. 
for a lot of high eyes when they say that. What do you think they get in response? The dopamine kick they want. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. The problem is that dopamine kick keeps them satiated. Why do I actually have to put in the work? I get what I want just by saying it. Until you don't. I pray everyone in this room has a friend that calls you out on your shit. I'll be that person for you if you need me to be. I don't have a problem being the asshole you guys don't want me to be. If it means you get to look at yourself in the mirror. We all need somebody who will tell us the truth. I go, hey, you keep telling me this is what you want, but the decisions you keep making do not line up with what you say you want. This is the work. But when you get internally aligned, everything else gets easier. But we've got to get real about where we're actually at. So we make this somewhat useful. That's why we have standards and expectations in our business. Standards allow, by the way, high performers love standards. Their standards usually are much higher than our standards, as they should be, but they love standards because it now becomes a rule of play. N nothing negs out a high performer more than somebody who's doing half the amount of work getting the same opportunity and pay. Enter many structures that are not sustainable. Imagine that, working somewhere where the person next to you works half as hard as you and gets paid the same amount. Would anyone think that's fair? No, in fact, I probably could ask the general population that question and they would say, fuck no, that isn't fair. Where are they living? Because if they truly believed that, what? The world would look a lot different. The world would look a lot different. But most people would say, you know, that doesn't seem fair. How is it that one guy can work twice as hard and get paid the same amount of money? So I work really hard to create an environment where that isn't the case. We do have a politic in our business. We absolutely have a politic in our culture. What is it? Performance. That's what I care about. Not tenure, not seniority. I don't give a fuck what your degree says or where you got it from. Because if it had any value, it'd show up. The real world is trying to tell you. If your degree had any value, it would show up. Where would it show up? Your results, your decisions, how you think, how you articulate. So I don't need you to tell me what you're gonna do. Go do it. Then that's what the world is begging for. Don't tell me what you're gonna do, go do it. So forget about, forget about work for a second. Where's an area this shows up massively in your life, outside of work? Relationships. Relationships. Not only are you a giver or a taker, are you a serial dater? What does your cycle look like? Okay, so high eye personality, best foot forward, knows exactly what to say for the outcome they want. The outcome they want, very often, is very short term and very short sighted. So when the initial buzz of, oh, you're Prince Charming wears off and the person begins to realize, oh, you're, you're not Prince Charming. Well, it's easier to disengage from that relationship and go find another person that will tell you you're Prince Charming for the next three months. And then when that wears off, go find the next person who will tell you you're Prince Charming for the next three months. So when does that end? Depends on the person. For some people, it never does. Without self-awareness, the pattern will continue. But here's the key. Any area of your life you feel trapped, if this is, make this an embedded program in your thought process. If you ever find yourself asking, why, any version of this, why does this keep happening to me? Oh. Why does this keep happening to me? If that question comes up, that should be a flag. Boop, boop. I lack self-awareness. I was coaching an inspiring uh, uh, entrepreneur a few days ago. She was sharing her 
pattern of behavior in a specific area, and she was talking about her p past three relationships. And I asked her, I said, what do all three of these relationships have in common? Her first response, I couldn't trust any of them. Okay, wow. So I didn't, didn't say anything more, I just repeated the same question. What do all three of these relationships have in common? They lacked integrity. Okay? So I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but I'm going to ask one more time. What do all three of these relationships have in common? They all ended up not being good people. She goes, I feel like I'm not understanding what you're asking. I said, I feel that too. So let me explain it another way. She's a coach. So I said, you're, you have a client that comes in. And they're frustrated, and they sit down with you, and they start talking about the last three years of employment. And you look, and you're like, wow, you've gone through, coincidentally, three jobs in three years. You've had three different bosses in three different years, over about the same time period. And she's unpacking her story and explaining it. What would you tell her? She immediately got it then. Well, the only commonality... Oh. Fuck. The only commonality is you. Why do you keep finding yourself in the same situation? Now, without self-awareness, you would think, oh, I just get unlucky. <laughs> I'm very unlucky. Huh. So unlucky. Or, everyone else is the problem. That's a classic. I would like to present to you, as controversial as this may be, you are creating your reality. But, but, you don't know my story. You, you don't know where I came from. I don't. I don't. Can any of us control what happens outside of us? No. What the fuck do we have a shot at controlling? Viktor Frankl sends the word, Man's Search for Meaning, if you read the book, who survived concentration camps. Um, my generation isn't quite sure that that ever happened. Oh, okay, we'll take it as theoretical then. What did he arrive at? The only choice we have is it, our own free will. We're creating our world. You're right. Shitty things could have happened to you. Absolutely. Some of you shittier things have happened than others. It's all relative, however. One thing you have a shot at controlling is you. Not what happens to you, but how you respond to it. So I told you, I've said this many times, I love reading success literature. I love reading somebody's story to success. The moment I am always looking for, the first moment I'm looking for is the moment they should have quit, the moment they should have given up. Why didn't you? What kept you going? Elon Musk, crazy story, I'm probably butchering it, but he got down to where he was one rocket away from bankruptcy. One rocket, three of them failed. He still fucking lobbed that thing up into space. He does it, it goes wrong, blows up, he's done. He's now hovering around one of the wealthiest men in America, who he doesn't give two shits about, evidently. But talk about, like, grit, resiliency. That moment you should have quit. I also like looking for that moment that got them in that situation. Like, why are you so motivated? Everybody has that story. A lot of successful people, first generation successful people, came from shit. Life was not given to them. All right, so all you have to do, if you ever find yourself in that situation where you're telling yourself, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what my experiences are. Go find somebody who had it worse off than you and made it happen. Yeah. As I promise you, if you live in the United States, you all have fucking two legs and a healthy mind, there are a fuck ton of people who started with less, who got further. So if you want to kill your stories, just go find people that ripped through their stories that were worse than yours. But eliminate those stories. And it starts with self-awareness, getting real about who we are and coming up with a real plan to get to where we want to go. 
We are all living our internal standard in any area of our life. And until you acknowledge that, not a lot's gonna change. By the way, and I'll end with this, this is the reason why who you hang out with and what you read matters. Because if, you have, if the people in your life have a higher standard than yours, one of two things will happen. You will either downgrade or upgrade. You will not hang out in that zone. Part of the reason we have standards the way they are is because if we're doing better than most of our peers, we're like, I'm doing better than most of my peers. What happens if your guys, all your peers are doing fucking 10 times better than you? You will raise your standard. Also, literature, educating yourself is the other piece that will help you do that because you start to see a bigger perspective. Wow, maybe there's another way to look at this. Yeah. Well, this started, guy started with less and he has more. Anyway, hope I've added some value today. Thanks, guys.